say. Okay, so um, we're from Mission State, and we're actually not experts on slide rules. So just gonna have that disclaimer out there already. But we thought that this is this would be a kind of a cool session to think about mathematics and kind of go back to the history of uh, different tools. I saw some people in an earlier session playing with a robot. Mm -hmm. So. Go back a couple seconds. <laughs> some paper. That still works though. This was high tech when I was a little kid. Yeah. <laughs> so we have an experience here. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, so the overview of our session, we're going to start off with a very, very brief history of the slide rule. Uh, we're going to transition into creating our own slide rule so that you guys can take your own thing home. And we're going to explore how a slide rule works by um, using these self-made tools. Okay, so I kind of want to bring it out. What, does anyone know what a slide rule is? What it was used for, history. It was used by the old geeks. <laughs> old geeks. It was, yeah, I don't, I never actually used it, but you would put in number, you'd slide it, the different bars to certain numbers, and it gave you in a like a calculator. Mm -hmm, so it give you your equation. Okay. You have something to add to? Oh no, I mean I, I've never actually used one, but I think. It just uses logarithms to multiply things. I mean, it's to multiply. Yeah. Nice start. So, speaking of that, um, that was kind of the kickstart, right? So, in the early 17th century, mathematician John Napier develops the logarithm, right? It's a function. We'll get into it in a second. And with that, basically came this quicker way of being able to do multiplication and division without having to do it longhand. Um, just for a second, I think, does anyone know the definition of logarithms? Maybe, maybe not. Or why it would help with multiplication and division? Just that it's used, or maybe not. So there's an interesting property um, with logarithms, which basically transforms multiplication into an addition and transforms division into subtraction. So this is what it is. Um, here's an example. It's kind of small over there. Okay, it's okay. Same size. So the logarithm function base 10 of 10, for example, does anyone know this? It's, it's one. Our, our recorder knows it. One. <laughs> so it is one. And why is it one? I'm losing you. Yes. We'll get to the slide rule in a second. But it's, a, it's good to know the math behind it. Yeah. Do you know why it's one? It's like the answer is the power of the power to which you have to raise the base. Good. So basically, right, we're taking this, the base, to this number as its power. We're trying to determine the power to get 10 back out. So we can come up with some other things if you double the powers. But what, it, what we have that's interesting is that the logarithm in base 10 of some number x plus the logarithm in base 10 of some other number y is the logarithm of their products. We won't get into why that's true or why this pen is dying. <laughs> but uh, we can see that we're adding two things, but somehow multiplication is involved. So you might be suspicious that you want it necessarily to be like that the logarithm of x plus the logarithm of y is the logarithm of x plus y, right? So 10 plus 10. So if you add this, then the logarithm of 20 should be 2. But that's not the case. So it's actually multiplication. And that'll help us out with why this works. So we, we heard that it's logarithms, but that should help. Okay, so we learned a little bit about logarithms as being an important part of it, but we also talked about uh, the slide rule being used to do calculations. Uh, so here's the inventor of the slide rule. Uh, in 1622, he, he invented the first slide rule, and kind of the purpose was to do calculations quickly. Um, this right here is kind of a standard slide rule, but what we're going to be making today is actually a circular one. So 
compare the two. There's both sliding movements that happen in both of them, but they're uh, slightly different in, in, shape, in terms of shape. Uh, so the design that was first developed was used well into the 19th century. So this is just a quick list, very brief overview of some of the uses through time. Kind of surprising, and right? it developed really over the course of 300 years to be used, you know, in a variety of different fields, and it made its way to the moon. As recently as 1969, was on Apollo 11 on the first moon landing. Yeah. Fun fact: If you watch Apollo 13, there are scenes where engineers are actually using slide rolls, too. Um, sure. So one of the things that I guess when we were kind of looking at the history of the slide rule surprised me at least was that there is for me like a connotation that there is such a thing as the slide rule and this is what it is. But what we found is there's really a lot of slide rules, different versions of them. And so we, we found obviously a circular one that we're going to build today. Um, and I thought this was an interesting fact too. So an estimated 40 million slide rules were produced in the 20th century alone. So that's quite a bit. Yeah, especially so. since now we don't really see slide rules around math classrooms. What do we have instead? Mm -hmm. Calculators. Okay, Calculators. Okay. So we'll pass out some, some materials here. We'll get to put them together. interested in uh, trying to make a standard horizontal looking slide roll, we also have templates and links to that information that will be posted on the additional materials website for the conference. I thought it would be fun to just kind of play around today, but then in some of that other materials that we'll be posting, there's how you use it, kind of described. I have more, more scissors. Moderator, would you like to join us? Plenty to go around. practical use might be now, which is if our battery dies on our calculator, we can pull this out. Non-battery power. 
the lights go out right there are like all solar powered now too, so. So as people are finishing up, there's no rush. So we were thinking that we don't want to necessarily take the fun out of kind of exploring it. So we have an example of how you might do one particular calculation. So there's a little bit involved with figuring out what some of these things might mean. And so we'll just kind of, you, you should feel free to, to turn and work with your neighbors. And then we'll just be around to, to answer some questions and then pose some more after this. So, if you figure it out, turn to your neighbor, you can ask them if they have it. So, so you line up. 
How is it different from like a ruler? So I think there's a tendency to like, for me, I was like, oh, it's gonna measure something. Let me measure. How is it different from a ruler? Or any other measuring thing? Yeah, so the scaling is different. Say we're on the same scale, right? So let's pick scale B. Is the spacing the same? No. Good. Between them? What, how does it change? Like say, so we're going around the D circle, right? The distance from like the beginning hat, the one, to two, 
Is it the same, bigger, or smaller than the distance from 2 to 3? Bigger. It's bigger. And so is that bigger than the distance, bigger, smaller, or the same as the distance from 3 to 4? It's like in halves, right? It might be halves. It might be halves. But it's definitely getting smaller. Yeah. So somehow, it's there's some considerations to this not really being necessarily a standard unit of measure. It might be, but it's not based on this numbering directly, right? <coughs> so these numbers, right, somehow this distance is being represented as you move with logarithms. So one of the things to notice also, we have this nice example Sarah helped us out with. So the logarithm of 10 is, is 1. So 1 is our unit. What do we notice about all the scales on, some of the, on most of these circles? So particularly D and C, what numbers do they go to? Goes up to 10, right? So we've set that as our 1. Going up to 10 is one time around the circle. And that's, a, that's an interesting result for the logarithms. So it starts at 1, it goes to 10. And we also have this addition thing. Did anyone, do you want to explore a little bit more about maybe how the addition is involved? Or should we keep talking? Keep exploring? So I think, um the table in the back also looked at something interesting. If they, if you did kind of a, this, oh, the example's not up here, but if you put the C cursor on six on the D scale, and then same thing, looking at six times one is six, six times two, six times. So looking uh, at how the numbers change when you're multiplying. So why don't you work in your tables, partners, or groups of three, and talk about what's going on. So that may be an interesting example, right? So can we do six times two? In the same way that we did three times two, can we do six times two? So we said the scale ends at 10, right? But does it still work? And if so, or is it close, or is it completely on? So, any, so results? Anthony has something. Has everyone had a chance to try to do 6 times 2? Yeah. yeah. What did you have? Um, 1.2. So 1.2. Right. So how is that related to 6 times 2 then? It's, uh, it's kind of this way. Right. Right? So somehow it's close, right? I mean, we could use it to figure out 12 if we needed to. So an interesting thing that kind of developed just after the slide rule 
is what you might have been using is scientific notation. So and using expo powers as, as exponents written in that shorthand form as opposed to writing 10 times, 10 times, 10 times, 10, right? So somehow if we can keep track of with scientific notation our decimal place, right, we can get to the, the final answer, right, of, of large multiplication, very large multiplication. So let's see, what did we talk about? So the numbering seems to be shrinking. Right? So what, the distance from 1 to 2 is bigger than distance from 2 to 3 is bigger than distance from 3 to 4. Um, what about division? Should we think about division? Yeah. Multiplication partner in credit? <laughs> Why don't you take a couple of minutes? If we have multiplication, there might be a couple of different ways that we could do division. Francis, how are you doing? Okay, my decision is a little off. We have extra capital. It keeps getting worse. I keep trying to get it. So I read it.
so, so I couldn't even, in comparison to this, I couldn't even use the weather. You don't really have any paper sliding. Because I'm not used to snow, for sure. Wood and nails. Yeah. How are you guys doing? Good. You saw one? You did the visual. How are you doing position? Oh, it was, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Considerations. So I thought that it was the most interesting 
thing that like I wasn't prepared for going into this was actually the development of science and competition within my entire life. Because of how necessary it was to keep track of your lessons as you're doing it. Because you're not doing it short, so it doesn't just happen to be a So you have to set it aside and keep track of what it is. And I never had that I never had a situation where there was more than one person. I tried to think of it. I thinking of 12 as one for two times. What I saw was a good so I would look at that and ask about your future and be able to think of so math class again? Really? Mm -hmm. Good for you. Oh, I'm in the same school. Advanced math, so we've already started. Just with your own three. Some background. I don't know if you're going to say it. I think I'm going to be able to do it. Yes, it's something. So you can just do it. I'm going to catch in for space engineering. There's some pretty neat, like, not just hands-on stuff. What would you like to do? I mean, that's pretty specific. That's okay. That's fine. It's like a kind of That's right. Tell me about that. 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 <laughs> Is there something like a particular grade? Eighth grade? All but the more yeah, yeah. 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 So if you take the well, ratio of the radius and it turns out to be the radius. So we're going to do countless things. And I don't the power. So for the power, so if we combine that, the so what this does out of it, we're using our paper to get a So three times three, I was not bad Otherwise, so three times nine is is twenty seven. And three times twenty seven, two point seven is eighty one. So the interesting thing is like where is the three coming in? Well it's because you have the reason you're in a position. So you can it. But you you are it's like a recursive thing. You take the result. Oh, I like oh, the okay. <laughs> 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 Yeah, we have some more Alright, hey guys, if you guys haven't already, could you guys please fill out the survey screen? Thanks. Thank you. So, uh, there's this, okay. I, I saw it. To do power, to do rail things, but I'm not sure. <laughs> it's going to be like. It's going to be like. Anything on the radar? 
what you say? Um, a <laughs> list? Very, uh, yeah. Good. My personal list. Nice I tried to be a speaker. I didn't get time to do Yes. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Oh. 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 Oh.